Good day, everybody. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar, and today what I'd like to do is talk uh, real quickly about identifying, rapidly identifying different types of uh, high-grade uh, AV, atrial ventricular um, blocks, or known as heart blocks. Uh, uh, occasionally, um, uh, we're running through uh, cardiology scenarios, and uh, some of the students get a little confused over the heart block, so I thought I'd just do a quick video on these because they can be a little confusing. So, first of all, let's just uh, familiarize ourselves with the ECG real quick. Uh, so what I have here is just a, a normal sinus rhythm. I have a normal rate, okay, and you can see I have a P for every QRS followed by a T. Um, so the vital questions that we can answer in regards to heart blocks is, um, are, is there a P for every QRS, and is there a QRS for every P? In this case, the answer to both of those questions is, um, let me go ahead and reposition the camera a little bit, is going to be yes. There is a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P wave. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and transition to a second degree heart block type 1. Uh, sometimes this is called a Mobitz 1 or a Winky Bach. Okay, so now the question is, is there a P for every QRS? Is there a P for every QRS? So that's the question I want to ask. And it, looking at this, um, what we want to do is we want to find our QRSs. So here are the QRSs, QRSs, QRSs. Is there a P wave in front of every QRS? And the answer to that is yes. In fact, there is a P wave for every QRS, okay? But the answer to the second question, is there a QRS for every P wave? Clearly in this case is no, there is not. Right here, I have a P wave and no QRS, okay? So if you have two P waves and there isn't a QRS in between them, the answer to the second question is no. And if the second question is no, but the first question is yes, then we're dealing with a second degree heart block, and we only need to tell whether that is a type 1 or type 2. So the characteristic or classic finding for a second degree type 1, or Mobitz 1, or Winky Bach, is a P to R interval that progressively lengthens until there is a P wave and no QRS. So let's go ahead and look. Can you see the P to R interval progressively get longer? Okay, so progressively gets longer until you have a dropped QRS, a P but no QRS, a P but no QRS, and then the cycle starts all over again. Once you have a dropped QRS complex, that is a P without a QRS, the cycle will start over again. So let's see if we can find a nice uh, little area here. Okay, so here it's dropped, and you can see it gets longer and the whole cycle starts over again. But there is still a P wave for every QRS. There just isn't a um, QRS for every P wave. That is a second degree type one. I am now going to go to a second degree type two or a Mobitz two. Alright, so again, the answer that I, the question I'm asking is, is there a P wave for every QRS? And in fact, there is a P wave for every QRS complex, so yes. And then the second question is, is there a QRS for every P? And in this case, the answer to that question, again, is clearly no, there is not. But how does this differ from the type 1? This differs from the type 1 in that there is no pattern of a progressively lengthening P to R interval. You can see that the P to R interval um, stays more or less fairly constant, and then you just have these dropped QRS complexes. Um, so, you do have a P for every QRS, but you have these QRSs that are just kind of dropped. Sometimes this is just dropped randomly. Other times there's a kind of method to the madness, if you will. In this case, what I have is I have a 3 to 1 block, where I have 3 P waves that get through, and then 1 P wave that gets dropped. 
So here's one, two, three, and drop. One, two, three, and drop. One, two, three, and drop. <clears throat> so there is a pattern, but the pattern is not the P to R interval in this case. The pattern is um, how many um, beats do I have between a drop? In this case, it is what we call a three to one. Sometimes it can be a two to one, maybe even a one to one, depending on how bad the block is. And then finally, we'll go into the last block, and this is a third degree, or what we call a complete heart block. And a complete heart block, there are, let's go back to those uh, same two questions. Um, is there a P wave for every QRS? In this case, the answer is no. So in the second degree heart blocks, there was a P wave for every QRS. In this case, there is the answer to that question is no. And is there a QRS for every P wave? Well, no. So if it's no and no, it, then the, the answer to the overall dysrhythmia is this must be a complete heart block. So if we take a little closer look at this, basically what I have is I have, I have QRSs that are going on and I have P waves that are going on and the P waves and the QRSs are pretty much doing their own darn thing. You can see a P wave here, P wave here, P wave here, P wave here. You've got P waves all over the place and you got QRSs all over the place. They're not talking to each other. Um, there is no communication between the atria, um, between the SA node, um, and the, um, the ventricles, okay? Um, in this case, you actually have a ventricular, underlying uh, ventricular escape rhythm um, that's doing its own thing, and then the atria um, are doing their own things. Um, so that's pretty characteristic of a um, third degree or a complete heart block. Okay, guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. As always, thanks for hanging in.